All right, so I gave the joke away. Hi, uh, so my name is Lars. I work for Mozilla. Um, I do security privacy networking. Um, this is a talk, uh, this is a, it's a bit of a takeover from the network dev room. So there's not going to be a lot of AI and LLMs in this talk. So I apologize <laughs> for that ahead of time. It's not aligned with the company goals for 2025, but we also like, you know, send network traffic. And I think it's important that we talk about that too. Um, so when I submitted the, the talk, um, I, I called it quick versus middle boxes. And then I you know, reconsidered and I thought it was very adversarial and that's not what we are. So we actually love the middle boxes. And, and we love the middle boxes so much that we do special things for them, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what those are and why we're doing them. Um, right, so agenda is pretty obvious. It's about quick, it's about middle boxes, and about the law we give them. Um, can I sort of get a feeling like who knows what quick is at some level? Okay, who knows what a middle box is at some level? Fewer people. Okay, because I have too many slides and I need to like, go fast somewhere, so. <laughs> We'll see where that goes. Right, so, so a little bit of a, a reminder of Quick, right? So Quick is a, is a fast, secure, evolvable internet transport. What do I mean by that? Fast means it should at least deliver the same performance as TCP and TLS have for HTTP2. Ideally, it should be better, right? Um, because otherwise, why bother? It should be evolvable. One of the problems we have with uh, H2 and TCP TLS is that specifically TCP um, has sort of um, been around the network for a long time, and so the network has ossified, to use a geological term, around the, an impression of what TCP packets should look like. And if you're sending TCP packets that look slightly different than you know, many middle boxes think they should look like, they get dropped. So it's terrible for evolution, and uh, with Quick, we really wanted to avoid this, which is one reason why we're encrypting almost everything in the Quick protocol. Um, the other reason is that we wanted to be secure, right? Uh, ideally, as secure again as TCP TLS and uh, better. And it should be a transport protocol. While H3 is probably the most important workload, it was pretty clear when we started with Quick that we wanted to support other um, things that aren't encapsulated in HTTP. So, so in theory, you can run Quick as a multi-stream transfer protocol and not bother with actually carrying HTTP. Um, that's um, you know, smaller use cases, but they do exist. So that's what I mean by transport. Um, this is roughly on the left-hand side how uh, the stack used to look. It evolved from HTTP 1.1 that had maybe TLS or SSL, if you go back all the way, over TCP. And then the, the current sort of or old-style web stack with H2, TCP, TLS 1.2. And then on the right-hand side, the colorful new thing, which is HTTP 3, providing the HTTP semantics on top of the quick protocol that encapsulates TLS 1.3. So it's not another layer. It's sort of in there somewhere. And it runs on top of UDP. Um, and the timeline very roughly is the Google experiment sort of started in 2013. Three years later, they came to the IETF. Um, we had uh, a very interesting meeting, and we decided, yeah, we're going to take this forward. Um, and then um, the IETF working group started, and like five years later, which for the IETF is super fast, just sort of level set expectations here. Um, we had like a bunch of RFCs, and Quick is now a standard. And this is the cloud flat over the last, I think, 12 months, and it shows sort of the light blue is, is H3. Um, around 30% of the web is, is HTTP3 at the moment, which is not bad considering that it became an RFC like four years ago. So, so that's what Quick is. Um, why did we do UDP? Um, the, the short answer is uh, UDP is all that's left, right? Middle boxes, I mentioned it before. Uh, the only thing that led through is typically uh, TCP. We had dreams in the IHF a long time ago that we would do SETP or DCCP or there would be these other protocols. That's why the IP protocol has this, pro like this type field for you know, what comes next. And in reality, everything that isn't UDP or TCP gets dropped. So we, didn't, we couldn't do TCP because ossification, so UDP is left. And there are some issues with that because the network has ossified also around UDP. There's an assumption that, you know, uh, UDP is really only for DNS, and so you know you don't need to sustain like long-lived flows, right? It's a request-response thing that's going over UDP, of course. So there's some issues, but there's also benefits you can deploy in user space. So you don't need to modify the kernel if you want to upgrade your Quick stack, um, and you can also um, because you, you can freely modify your Quick implementation, you can offer alternative transport types. So not just like a byte stream like TCP, but other things. Um, why do we need congestion control? The answer is that we do, right? We, it's the internet. I don't want to go into this detail. This is apparently a photo of a Chinese highway, which in the, shows you why congestion control matters, not only in the network. Um, why do we want TLS? Again, duh. Um, everybody knows building your own crypto is bad. Five minutes left. That seems optimistic. Um, so we want to use TLS. Um, right. Middleboxes. Uh, they meddle. 
um, they meddle uh, in good ways. So there's these TCP accelerators that if you have geostationary satellites, they make that work by like lying to the end systems about what the path looks like, um, which is, is great, but also terrible because they you know, do really bad things to all kinds of traffic. Um, but there's also these things, right? Quantum insert, the, the uh, NSA full take, there's the, the great firewall that people have heard about. There's a great paper that talks about the great cannon. If you haven't read that paper, read it. It's great. Um, China um, basically weaponizes uh, arbitrary websites by injecting JavaScript uh, through the Great Firewall that then turns the clients into DDoS machines. Not in China, but elsewhere. So it's, it's fascinating. Read it. So these sort of attacks are sort of not great, right? And we want to do something against those kinds of middle boxes. And there's Snowden, right? Like the IETF, we decided, because we were the kings of the internet apparently, that you know, pervasive monitoring is an attack and we're going to do something. What does something mean? We're going to encrypt as much as possible. But what else could we do, right? And this is what we're getting to with the love. Um, TLS extension randomization is a thing. It's not sort of super great, but it's par for the course. You do it, right? There's extensions that make your fingerprintable, so if you randomize it, you're a bit less fingerprintable, maybe. Um, the slide was out of order. There's Greece, which is this concept that it used to say in, in the RFCs, if you read them, right? You must set these bits to zero because they're for future extensibility, and you must ignore them when you, when you read them. And that works great, except every middle box drops every packet that isn't zero uh, in, those, in those code points, right? So that, in, in practice, doesn't work at all. So we decided you must make them random, and you must ignore them, and that works better. Um, but we also have various other uh, ways in which we grease the protocols at the network doesn't see any bit patterns that don't change, which is the thing that, that breaks extensibility. Um, TLS SNI observability is a problem. SNI is basically the name of the website you're talking to. Uh, it's an ASCII string that's in the, in the first packet, which is not great, um, easily observable. Um, there's encrypted client hello, which is great. Um, it's, it's complicated, but basically it means there's an inner SNI and an outer SNI. The inner one is encrypted, the outer one if you're using Cloudflare, which is at the moment basically the only CDN that it has this enabled, it says cloudflare-ech.com, which is great because they don't know you go to Mozilla to come. What they do know, you're using ECH, so they're going to drop you because you're using ECH. This is what Russia is doing right now, for example. Um, so what can we do? Um, SNI obfuscation, cr Chrome calls this chaos protection. With Quick, the crypto stuff are um, chunkable, so we can basically, we don't have to carry the full client hello, we can slice it and dice it and send stuff out of order. Um, so for example, Mozilla.com becomes something that isn't as easily recognizable as Mozilla.com. And with bonus with uh, post-quantum crypto, the client hello needs multiple packets because big certs. Um, that means we have multiple physical, physical packets we need to send so we can slice and dice the SNI and other interesting bits of data over multiple packets um, and force the middle boxes to keep state. So they need to store the packets, reorder the data, reassemble it, and then they can maybe read the SNI. So it's not protection, but it just makes it a little bit more annoying, right? And, and, and the hope is that middle boxes that are run by nation states that want to do this for everybody, for all the traffic, need to spend a bit more bucks to do this, which is pretty much the best we can hope for. Um, there's a better draft. Martin Thompson, a Mozilla smart guy, has a proposal that I don't think has been submitted to the ITF, but you can find it if you look for that string. Um, which uses clever crypto to uh, actually masquerade the SNI more fully. So not just slice and dice it and, and make it obfuscated, but actually like hide it. It's really good. I think it's great. We should do it. Requires support from the servers. Um, zero is for fund and profit. That's my last slide. So a uh, great paper about the Great Firewall again uh, on the bottom. One of those researchers emailed us and says, why does your quick stack pad with zeros? Everybody else pads random. And we said, because. Uh, doesn't matter. And he said, well, that makes your packets go through the Great Firewall at the moment. And, and the reason is that the Great Firewall has some very simple heuristics to identify all encrypted traffic. And one heuristic is the amount of zeros and ones in terms of bits in the packet is roughly the same. And if you pad by zeros, it's not. There's a lot more zero bits in that packet. And so, yeah, they use very simple heuristics like that because they're cheap and they're effective. And that's how they scale out, right? So anything you can do to make those things harder are wins. And so um, we, we keep padding with zeros, and we're trying to find other things that we can do. Um, so A, I want to thank you guys for being a great audience. B, if you're interested to work on these things, uh, we're cont contactable on GitHub and on other places. Um, if you have the ability to test Quick or Firefox in interesting regions or in interesting networks, contact me. I'd be happy to send you a thing you can run 
on a command line and tell me whether it works or not. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Raise your hand if you have a question. <laughs> have you had any issues with antivirus software intercepting the traffic? <laughs> yeah, that's a little, so that's an inside joke. Is that so, so one of the reasons we're also interested in this is that um, one of the spikes we saw earlier in the crash reports was that so we had a bug in the quick stack um, that we haven't ever hit before, which is basically we get an acknowledgement for a packet we never sent. That doesn't really happen, right, because, you know, the, you know but there was an antivirus system that's pretty widely deployed on Windows that um, was getting in the middle of the, of the quick flow, was mucking with the packets, got confused, says, I'm out of here, let these guys talk again at the endpoints. And so the server thinks it's, it's seen a packet that we never sent and it sends us an act and we go, crash, right? So um, good thing is we found it quickly. It was a top crasher, I think, for, for a little while. But then, um, so, so, so yeah, we, we want also those middle boxes that are antivirus systems basically out of the way. Not so much because I don't trust them and, and you know, people install them for good reasons, it? but you know, they have bugs too. And specifically also I'm worried about the performance bugs because the kernel TCP stack is on all platforms really good. And if a proxy uses that or one of those, those inspection things uses that, that's great. But they have their own quick stack, which uses a user level library to like send network traffic. And I have no idea how good the performance of that is. Probably not as good as the servers and the clients. And so I want them out of the way. Thank you for that reminder. Thank you. <laughs> Do we have more questions? I don't see any hands. Okay, cool. Do we have anything in the chat? Thank you very much.